I knew I could count on you to show up. God, is it great. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last Monday of the month. It is January 30th. Now, as we do in every show, we're going to be looking at some hot OTC and penny stocks. At least I hope they're hot. We've kind of changed the format around here. I usually talk about the stocks that are on top and hot. You could go to any scan, put in a search for penny stocks, and whatever comes to the top, those are normally the ones we were talking about. Easy to find, very entertaining, and maybe a little educational, but not a lot of opportunities. Most of them hit highs and then fell back and never came back to them. So why waste our time there anymore? So what we're doing now is we're looking for stocks that haven't run yet. A bit trickier, just a wee bit. What I am now doing is I'm looking at charts first, I'm looking for a change in trend, a volume explosion, a setup for a breakout. Then I go doing my due diligence and my research. I look for lingering news, news that may have come out, say, a month ago and said something's going to happen at the end of January or at the beginning of February, a catalyst that could kick that chart into high gear. That's what I'm searching for, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Now, I've got some news over here. That's news I've been looking at over, I think there's about 10 days worth there. It is getting less and less, having a hard time filling that for you. But that is prime news. Mergers, acquisitions, uplistings, things like that. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down at the bottom. Now, I get all that news right here at the otcmarkets.com website. Right there, news. I do not get one stitch of news about OTC stocks anywhere else but this site. This is my go-to site for information. My financials, my filings, my share structure. I always start here, and I normally find what I'm looking for. But of course, no site's perfect, and the internet is always there waiting for me. But to start on the internet for every stock I'm researching? Oh no, 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 no. This is my number one site because it saves me a lot of time and frustration, and it will for you too. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Ah, uh, not looking real good there. Let's hope for something when I refresh. Uh, we got nothing. Boo. Everything is down. Our dollar volume is at 1.5 billion. We would like it to be at 2, 2.1 billion. That used to be a threshold. We haven't seen that in a very long time. Share volume, we're at 6.4 billion. We need to be at 10 billion. That's second gear. Do you hear those gears grinding? <laughs> We need 10 billion. I see the momentum kick up every time we hit 10 billion shares. And our trades, ah, same old story, folks. We are stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades. We've been stuck there for longer than I can remember. So no, the market hasn't made any drastic changes. But as I say every day, thank God stocks have a mind of their own. We're always finding stocks that have activity. Now the stocks we're going to look at may have had a little activity, but we're trying to find stocks before they have run. So we're not going to be blowing your mind with this information. But hopefully, and I've been doing pretty good here, hopefully the stocks I found for you today can make you some money tomorrow or the next day. Let's go see what I got. First stock we're looking at is a penny stock on the OTC. Well, kinda, not exactly. Well, I'll explain what I mean in a minute. This is ticker PLSH, Panacea Life Sciences. They had some news come out about a week ago. They got involved in a deal and it hasn't yet closed. This could be the catalyst that causes the charts to ignite. She finished a day at 21 cents with about 13.5% gains. Now, she is on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the better tier. That's what the QB stands for, better. It's better because they have to audit their financials to be on this tier. And that's a great thing. These are numbers you can trust. They're actual and factual numbers looked at by a CPA. When you're dealing with pinks on the OTC, 99% of them are only giving us disclosures. Disclosures are just the information and numbers being passed off to us by the management, for better or for worse. So, a stock on the QB tier is more trustworthy, more transparent. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent, both those green ticks. I'm always dogging you to look for if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold. There's a lot of important information here that's been validated. We love validated information. But if you're going to be in a stock for a quick swing or a day trade, you really don't have to worry about this too much. 
Now, this is not actually a penny stock. It's penny stock exempt. Even though it's only 21 cents on the OTC market, it is literally not a penny stock. The reason is they have proven themselves to be reliable. They've removed that riskiness that comes with being, say, a startup company. The actual definition of penny stock exempt is that you have to be either over $5, which they're not, or you have to have been in business for three to five years with millions of dollars in assets during that entire time period, and your financial filings have to have been all on time. They're in great shape. They've proven to us that we can count on this company. So they got all the green ticks here we are looking for. They look good. So what does Panacea Life Sciences do? Well, they tell us that they are a leading producer of hemp-derived products. We take pride in pioneering the hemp industry by providing raw materials and white label CBD and CBG products to popular mainstream consumer brands. White label products is big business. What that basically means is this company makes the product, but then they put your label on the bottle. So it looks like it's your product, but it's really this company's products. That's how Amazon made so much money. Have you ever noticed when you go shopping on Amazon, you look for a product and you see the same product over and over again, but they've all got different names on them, different logos? That's white label. Same product, different people have the right to sell it. So that's what they do primarily is white label, but they're involved with more. They tell us here that the company is at the forefront of product development for the food and beverage, pharmaceutical, cosmetic, beauty, personal care, and pet industries. Panacea has also invested heavily into the manufacturing of nutraceutical products. So they're dealing with hemp in all sorts of ways. I suppose whatever door opens up for them, they would take advantage of. So what was the relative volume around the company today, considering she had no catalyst? Not a lot. They are still under the radar, normally doing about 24,000 shares a day. Today, she had a little bump. She's up to 33,000. Not a lot of attention being paid to this stock yet. Share structure. All right, I'll confess, I did not go look this one up, but I can assure you, it is a low float. I always use the unrestricted shares. I just presume any share on the market is in the float, but this number isn't always correct here. But they've got 5.8 million. That's a great float. If that's what it is, I'm happy. I like it. But they do list a float here. Normally, I don't pay any mind to it because this date is just years back. But this is only a week back. And they say the float is 2.2 million shares. So you know what? Either way we go, we have a low float. One is terrific. One is great. Either way, we are winners. Financials for PLSH. All right, we've only got annuals up to 2021. She did $2 million at the end of 2021. We know it's millions. We've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers here. Now, that was a big drop from 2020. Woo, she went from $9 million down to $2 million. I'm kind of curious about 2022. She is making money. We got about a half a million the first quarter, half a million the second quarter, 366,000 the third quarter. So you're looking at 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. So they are holding their own. We don't see any terrific growth or anything, but they are holding steady. Disclosures. What do we got over here? We're looking for some new information in the filings. Well, we've got a 8K. That came out on the 23rd. That is associated with the news I'm about to share with you. And then we've got a Form 5 here. Form 5 show ownership of stock to the insiders. And this is the chief executive officer. And they tell us how much common stock he has, Series C preferred stock, Series D preferred stock. And there's all the numbers. You can't see them, can you? <laughs> right there. There's all the numbers up there. So that's what that's for. They're just letting us know how invested the management is at this point in time. And let's go take a look at that news because that's where our catalyst is truly coming from. All right, so we've got news that went back to October here, and then we had a piece of news that came out a week ago. Let's jump on into that. This came out on the 23rd. Panacea announces letter of intent to acquire N7 Enterprises. N7 Enterprises operates an expanding Florida chain of kava and kratom lounges under the Lizard Juice and N7 Nitro Kava brands founded in 2012, and is also a distributor of CBD, hemp, 
Kratom, and Kava-related products through its New Age distribution subsidiary. N7 Enterprises showed $4.1 million in revenue for 2022. Completion of the acquisition of N7 Enterprises is subject to a few conditions. Of course, always is due diligence, completions of certain filings, but what they're saying is it's not done yet. The proposed acquisition is not expected to constitute a fundamental change for the company, nor is it expected to result in a change of control for the company. So they're just telling you here it's not a reverse merger. This company isn't taking over. It is becoming an acquisition. It's just going to add to their revenues. No big change, just a snap-on add-on. Plug and play, if you will. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of bump we can get when the catalyst shows herself. As you expected, we are over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. I got this from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. They gave it to me absolutely free and they'll do the same thing for you. Sign up. You don't have to give them a deposit. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and they'll let you use TOS anytime you want absolutely free. What a bargain. All right, before we jump into PLSH, let me catch you up on the due diligence I've been doing today on warrants attached to SPACs. You know I'm into these right now. We've been talking a lot about them. I've been sharing strategies with you and I'm investing in them, but I'm not going to be talking about them in this video today. But I do want to catch you up with the information I have acquired today about SPACs. First off, these are the SPACs that ran today. I have a list here of 90 SPAC warrants. These are all the tickers for their warrants, none of the SPACs. The SPACs are about $10 a share. I don't want those. I'm after the penny stocks and all their warrants are penny stocks. The warrants all have a W or a forward slash WS behind them. And I got 90 of them here and I consider them all hot. What makes them hot? All of these have news. I accumulated these one by one each time I found news and I dragged it over here. So I got about 90 of them and this is what ran today, but we really didn't have any big runners today. We've got some that just about touched 100% and I seen one today actually hit 800% gains. And would you believe it did that on just 100 shares? Yeah, somebody paid big, went up and came right back down. So this was a slow warrant day, even though we had gains, there were no big runners. Now, speaking of my due diligence, that is what I found today on SPACs. Each day, I will try to share this information with you to keep you up with what I am learning. In case I'm not talking every day about them, you can still make benefit from my due diligence. All right, let's jump into PLSH. This is a six month, four hour chart. Back here in May, we had a high of 50 cents and she has been falling ever since then. Hit a low here, just over four cents the first week of January and changed direction. We got a new trend here, folks. She was trapped in this huge channel coming downhill and then has changed trend off of that low bubble in this little channel and is working her way right up to that 200 day SMA where it looks like she wants to break out. You can see the volume is getting stronger. There's no doubt about that. All of our technicals are looking strong. Our PPO is at a crossover about a week ago. This is our percentage price oscillator, very much like the MACD. You read them the same, but the percentage price oscillator works with the percentage of the price. MACD works with the whole price. MACD has had a crossover and has gotten on top of her signal line. Looks good, pushing up. Got a strong straight line on our ADX. The ADX tells you when your trend on the chart is going to change. It's not about if this is going up or down. It's just, is it going the same direction? If that changes direction, it means our trend has changed. So everything's looking good. And our RSI is up near 62 right now. Now, before I run away from here, I want to draw a support resistance line. I see a very strong one right there. What makes it so strong are all these prices coming down, stopping and changing direction over and over and over again. So I drew one right there. And if you notice, we are right there, folks. There is our support line. We are sitting right on top of that support. Now I want to back up because I want you to see what is going on back there. Look at how big these bars are. 
Look at the price activity. The action is huge here. Got real tiny down here. Not a lot going on, but once she was above this support resistance line, things got mighty. So we could see once she gets over top of that line, which she's over right now, and the 200 is right there, we could see an explosion with the right piece of news. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, got a lot of lines going on here. Hope they don't confuse you. That is our support line right there. That is where the price has come down. You can see she went through it, bounced on it, and is sitting on it right now. She did tag her 20 day SMA where she tagged here and down here. She's paying a lot of homage to that 20 day SMA when she breaks her nine day SMA. Technicals, they are cooling off a bit. We had a lot of falling compared to the day before today. So everything is cooling off yet. Look at our RSI. Our RSI is pushing up even with that red bar. So when we come in on the five minutes, we should see some green bars at the end of the day. Ta-da, look at that. Big old green bar at the end of the day. We like that. So let's get rid of some of these lines so we can make sense of this. All right, there you go. We had a low here of 15 cents. That was back on the 23rd when the news came out. That is when the news came out. You had a jump that day. She then pushed all the way up here to 20 cents. Not a big gain. Came back down, laid really flat here, and now she started growing from that 15 cents up to 24 cents. You're looking at about 75% gains. Went sideways, took a big drop, has hit her 50-day SMA, which has just come into the picture, right? Now, I always say, when a new SMA comes onto the board, you can count to 80 to 90% of the time, the price will gravitate to that new SMA. Whether the price is below it or above it, it'll go to that new SMA. Now, sometimes it'll stick, sometimes it just tags it like a tag team wrestling match, just hits it and goes back. And that's kind of what it looks like it did here. She got underneath her nine day strong. The entire bar was under it tagged that 50-day SMA and jumped hard, put herself above her nine and above the 20, and is sitting there right now. Perfect position. We've got a bounce off on our PPO right now. She is starting to come back up. Our ADX is going down. Now, we haven't talked about this in this show, and this isn't a great example, but when you see the PPO, this blue line going up, and you see the ADX line, the red one going down, and they're pulling away from each other, guaranteed 100% the price is going up. So you can literally watch your PPO and your ADX. And when one of those lines changes direction, it doesn't matter which one, you know your climb has stopped. This is a great indicator for trend change. Our MACD looks like we're about ready to do a crossover here. We bounced off the signal line and our RSI is pushing up as you would expect with that bounce. So she is warm. She is warm. She's changed her trend. She was falling for a long time. She's just about ready to get on top of that 200 on the four hour and get on top of that very strong resistance support where we could see some huge bounces. Those were 100% bounces you were looking at back there. So there is a very strong possibility that when they complete this deal, the way the charts look, she could ignite. PLSH, you could get a gain out of this. Put it on your watch list. Next stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is Black Box Stocks, ticker BLBX. Now, the company had some news about three weeks ago, pretty impactful, had a good bounce on that day, kept most of her gains, has gone sideways since then until today when she is starting to break out with a lot of extra fervor, more than she had the day the news came out. Now, there's no new news. There's no new filings. All we've got is that news, but it is impactful news, as I'm going to share with you. So BLBX finished the day today at 72 cents with just about 67 and a half percent gains. Now, when we are looking at these major exchange stocks, if you see one under a dollar, you have to take concern with that. Stocks on the major exchanges have what's called a minimum bid price requirement. They cannot come under a dollar and stay there for too long. If they do, they could be removed from the major exchanges and put down to the OTC market. So I did my due diligence and this company has received their warning back in October. They were given six months to get that price 
over a dollar and to close over a dollar 10 days straight for them to get out of hot water. And that deadline is April 23rd, 2023. They're not there yet, but they're working towards it. Hopefully they will succeed. So what is this company about? Well, I could read this one, but it's kind of long-winded. So I'm going to jump on over here to their news press that we're going to look into. They tell us that Black Box Stocks, Inc. is a financial technology and social media hybrid platform offering real-time proprietary analytics and news for stock and option traders of all levels. Our web-based software employs predictive technology enhanced by artificial intelligence to find volatility and unusual market activity that may result in the rapid change in the price of a stock or option. Black Box continuously scans the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, CBOE, and all other option markets, including the OTC, analyzing over 10,000 stocks and up to 1.5 million option contracts multiple times per second. We provide our users with a fully interactive social media platform that is integrated into our dashboard, enabling our users to exchange information and ideas quickly and efficiently through a common network. We recently introduced a live audio screen share feature that allows our members to broadcast on their own channels to share trade strategies and markets insights with the Black Box community. Black Box is a software as a service company with a growing base of users that spans 42 countries. Current subscription fees are $99.97 per month or basically $1,000 a year. So it's not free. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Again, considering she has no direct catalyst. Whoa! See, there was definitely some attention being paid to this. And the news came out, I believe, on the 4th of this month. She is normally only doing 52,000 shares a day. That's under the radar. Well, today she was not under the radar. Today she did 10 and a half million shares. That is a huge jump, folks. I think that's something like uh, close to 200 times her normal volume. Incredible. Share structure. Okay, again, I did not go look this up, but I can assure you we're looking at another low float. The outstanding shares is only 13.1 million, so you know it's going to be low. If we go to unrestricted, we're at 5.6. We go to their float, which they don't have one here. Mm. All right, we're just going to stick with 5.6, and I'm going to be happy with that. That is a very low float, but we're doing good today. 5.6 million. Financials for BLBX. At the end of 2021, they did $6 million, and look, it's increasing. It's like doubling. From 2018 to 19, they went from a half a million to a million, to three million, to six million. What are they doing right now in 2022? About 1.5, 1.3 million every quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's about six million right there. What are they doing? Six million right there for the whole year. So we've still got one more quarter. So chances are they've done more money this year than they did last year and the year before. So they're growing. That's what we noticed. They are growing. Financials for this company were already there. So let's check out disclosures. All right, we got an 8K. That is the news. That is when the news came out. So we're just going to go take a look at that news. So this came out on the 4th, the 5th, one of those two days. Black Box Stocks announced today that it has extended its $2.5 million stock buyback program to December 31st, 2023. As of September 30th, 2022, the company had repurchased 600,000 shares of its common stock at a total cost of $1.4 million. Stock purchases can be made from time to time using a variety of methods, including open market purchases or block trades. And that's what it's all about. They're buying shares back. So even if other people aren't buying shares, they are buying shares and they can do it at their discretion. When they think the market's down or the market needs some pump, they will throw money into that market and get it wired up. And today it was wired from 52,000 shares to 10.6 million without any fresh catalysts. Tell me that news doesn't make a difference. Let's go take a look at the chart. 
Not a bad looking chart if I say so myself. This is ticker BLBX, six month, four hour chart. We got a high here of $2.09. This is in June. And then we got a low here in January of 26 cents. Once she hit this high, she just went sideways. Looks like she was waiting for that 200 day SMA to get close. I don't know why she didn't take any opportunity to get on top of it, that's for sure. She ran from it until she hit that low actually bounced off that low, pushed herself right up underneath that 50 day SMA and then out came the news to pick the ball up and carry it even further. Pushed way up here, right up underneath our 200, settled back down, went sideways and then today popped. I don't know why, there's no apparent reason, but look at all that volume that came in today. And there's no predecessor volume, there was nothing there beforehand. This just came out of nowhere. And the technicals are extremely hot. Everything is pushing up in a hard way on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. There's that low bubble, 26 cents. She jumped for two days, getting just on top of that 50 day SMA. The news came out that launched her up over the 200 and she has just been hovering over that 200 like she's a drone. And then today she launched going from about 44 cents to 98 cents. That is over 100% gains before she fell back to 72 cents, which is where she closed. I see we've got some aftermarket activity here. We'll have to see what that price is. Technicals are still strong on the hourly. Everything is pushing up with a little bit of cooling, but I'm surprised to see how hot they still are. Five day, five minute. So she's doing not much at all here, just sitting on that 200 day SMA. Had some aftermarket activity yesterday, some pre-market activity this morning, then cooled down completely. And here at about 11 in the morning, she got hot. Who knows why? She took off from 46 cents, went up to that 98 cents, came back down and has settled here at about 68 cents. Looks a little bit lower than where she closed. Now what I'm gonna do, cause I'm curious to see if that price is in the middle. I'm gonna grab my Fibonacci and I'm gonna poke the bottom where the surge started. I'm gonna poke the bottom and then I'm gonna go to the very top and poke it. What I am looking for is the halfway point. So I'm gonna draw a line right down the center, right there. Ah, we're a little bit below it, little bit below it. I would like to see the price be 50% or more of what it put on the table. Normally seven out of eight times out of 10, it's gonna stay there and continue to climb. If it comes underneath, uh, you got more probability that she could fall. Now she is sitting on top of her 50 day SMA and the 20 day is trying to come over. It looks like she's fighting this right now. She is going across. You can see she's hit her head on that 50% line right there a couple times. She is trying to get over it. So she has potential. She has set up, she has strength. You see the fervor and the surge without any news. This news came out three weeks ago and she's running right now. Now, I don't know if any more catalysts are gonna come out, but she's acting very strong being this far away from the news. So I would look at BLBX. I'd keep my eye on her. Jumping from 52,000 shares up to 10 million is incredible. But to be honest, I would expect a pullback before I saw another bounce. Just my opinion. Last stock we're taking a look at is going for pennies on the OTC market. And it's not a penny stock either. This is ticker DFCO, Delrata Financial Corp. They had news come out about two weeks ago that they are restructuring the company to make it more profitable. And though they didn't come directly out and say it, they sure are alluding to the fact that this could be a possible spin out which means we would get free shares, dividends, and a whole nother company. Now, as I said, they have not made any direct statements about that, but they sure are inferring it. But I'll let you be the judge. DFCO finished the day at about 14 cents with almost 10% gains. She too is on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB where you have to have your financials audited. Got all those important green ticks we're looking for, verified profile, transfer agent verified. And as I said, she is no longer a penny stock. She is penny stock exempt. She's proven herself to be reliable. And they've got independent directors. Now, one of the only reasons you need independent directors is to uplist. You cannot uplist without independent directors. Now, I don't know. Maybe they use these independent directors to come from the pink to the QB. I haven't checked. But maybe they have intentions of going to the QX or the NASDAQ. 
It's possible. I haven't checked that either. All I know is they've got independent directors on the payroll and you don't need them unless you have plans of uplisting. So who knows? So what can we learn about Del Rada? Well, they tell us here that Del Rada accelerates positive change for current and future generations by harnessing true potential and developing products and services that become transformative innovations. They have four subsidiaries, Del Rada Health, Del Rada Energy Solutions, Del Rada Precision Manufacturing, and Del Rada Technologies. And to be completely honest with you, I have no clue what services or products they have. I just haven't gotten that deep and there's not any information just sitting out there to read to tell me. So a little more due diligence will fill in those blanks. So what was the relative volume today around their two week old news? Well, that's kind of what you expect, right? She's normally only doing 156,000 shares a day. Today, she dropped to 120,000. Definitely under the radar, no doubt about that. Share structure. Had to go look this one up. Way too many numbers here. We got 69 million unrestricted, 63 at DTC, 43 million in the float. What is it? Well, I went looking it up and I found two numbers that kept being repeated, 75 million and 82 million. So I'm not exactly sure either. I'd be more inclined to agree with 75 to 82, but it may be one of these lower numbers. So that's the range we're looking at. Financials for this company. Well, hot darn, look at that. This company is growing by leaps and bounds exponentially. From 2019 to 2022, they went from 72,000 to 1.1 million, to 3.4 million, to 19.2 million. That is some incredible growth in revenues. Let's look at her quarterly. Well, she's still maintaining a lot of strength here. 5 million, 5 million, 3.5 million, 4.2 million. She is curbing down a little bit on her quarterlies, but year over year, she looks like she is growing at a tremendous rate. Let's take a look at our disclosures. We're looking for 8Ks or Form 4s. Form 4s will work too. This is a filing that lets you know whenever an insider, anybody in the management, buys or sells shares of stock. And it looks like Brian Bonar, who is the chief executive officer, has bought shares. Anything green, the A is acquired, that's all good. He has bought all these shares between November and January. Not a ton of them, but he's buying them on a regular basis. So what does he know that we don't know? All right, let's go take a look at that news. So this news came out January 12th. Del Rada Financial, a problem-solving innovator that takes on complex multidisciplinary challenges in healthcare, clean energy, precision manufacturing, and technology, today announced a new operating structure. Del Rada Health experienced strong revenue growth of $13.6 million, representing almost a 700% year-over-year increase. I knew it was big. This growth reflects the demonstrated demand within today's health environment for core, frontline health products and services, including robust virus and disease screening capabilities, pharmaceutical goods, and holistic wellness clinics. Now, this is where it gets a little vague. Under the new operating structure, Genefic, formerly Del Rada Health, will be separated from the other wholly owned subsidiaries of Del Rada, ensuring that Genefic can concentrate its efforts solely on the healthcare market. Genefic will continue to be a 100% owned by DFCO with financial reporting to remain unchanged. Now, I'm a little confused there. There's some inferments. Yes, it's going to be owned by DFCO. Well, why would you say that? Maybe because it's not going to be in the same ticker. Maybe it's going to have its own ticker. And just because it's over there doesn't mean it's not yours. That's kind of what they're saying, right? And they did say here they are separating it from the other subsidiaries. Well, how do you separate it if you're all under one ticker? So to me, it sounds like they're saying the word spin out without saying the word spin out. It's nowhere in here, but I would be on the watch for that. I'm not quite sure what they're talking about, but this could be the beginning of a run. If they say the word dividend, if they say spin out, this thing is going to take off. They haven't said that yet. So now is a very good time to consider the chart. Let's go do that. 
taking a gander at DFCO. This is a six month, four hour chart. And as you can see, she has been falling this entire time. She's gotten trapped in this channel, only breaking out of it twice here recently and all the way back here when she hit her high of 60 cents. She was just tagging the 200 day SMA from underneath. Right now we are tagging that 200 day SMA from on top. Now she's been having a good run here, folks. She's been running from the end of December all the way to January 19th. Run, run, run. You can see that pushing up and outside of the channel. She went from eight cents up to 20 cents. Went sideways for a few days and now has been falling. Came back inside the channel, bouncing on our 50 day SMA and looks like she is ready to launch again, sitting right on that channel. Now I normally do not count the first breakout of a channel or a breakout over a support or an SMA to be the one that's going to search. It could, but normally you see that as a test. It'll come back two, three times and then run. So this is the second test, if you will, but she didn't come too deep. She just came right up underneath. So I'm expecting a nice surge out of this. Four hour technicals don't have a whole lot to offer us. They're all pretty weak and we don't have any extra volume in here either. All we've got is a nice setup for a breakout. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Lots of activity here. This run is actually starting back on December 30th at seven and a half cents. You had a nice run here outside of our channel came back into that channel and is bouncing back up and you can see she is right there. And look at the size of these bars, folks. You see how big these are once she got decisive about what she wanted to do? Lots of little bars and then some huge bars. Our technicals, they're warming up, but they're still not showing a whole heck of a lot of strength and the volume is pretty wimpy right now. Five day, five minute. All right, she's been falling. Falling for the last five days, hit this low bubble of 12 and a half cents. And today she's had a nice strong bounce, took herself from underneath the nine, on top of the 20, on top of the 50, trying to break out of the channel with the 200 right there above her. And that's a brand new one, right? Just came on the board. So what do I think? I think the price will gravitate to it. And if it can get that close to the 200, it could break out. Now remember folks, we're looking at this because I think the company might be doing a spin out. We might be giving a dividend. That's really why we're looking at this, but I don't know that we are. So we've got ourselves a nice point on the chart. It's fallen, it's low. She's at a breakout point and we've got some curious news. I know it's speculation. I wish I could be more firm about what's going on, but you know as much as I do. So DFC, for a gain and a dividend? Maybe. To be completely honest, this was a lot easier when I was just sharing stocks with you that had been running all day. They were real easy to find. <laughs> This a bit trickier, trying to find those stocks that have not yet run, but look like they're ready to run. And then finding news, trying to find the catalyst that can push them. It is a bit tricky, but I think it's paying off. I've shared quite a few stocks with you so far since we changed our format and many of them are taking gains. And I'm not even talking about the SPAC warrants, just regular old common stock. So hopefully we found a few more today, but don't let my due diligence be the end of your due diligence. Pick up where I left off, folks. This is your money. These are your investments. Thanks for showing up, folks. I appreciate it. I do hope I shared something with you valuable. Remember, doing your own due diligence, it's worth it. The more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See ya.